Hey, what's happening, everybody? Um, just doing a quick little <clears throat> follow-up video to the um, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, reaction I did the other day. Um, I've watched it a few more times, and I've got a couple of thoughts on some things. Um, and reading comments on other videos and stuff like that, I see that... Um, a lot of you all kind of have the, the, the same things I'm thinking, you know, like as far as like where it's going, you know, how things look, opinions on the system and that kind of thing. One of the first things I noticed, obviously, is like a lot of the looks have changed. Um, it seems like they have, uh, <clears throat> honestly, sorry, <clears throat> I've got like a little cough going on, a little congestion or something, so I'll, I'll try to edit any heavy coughing out of the video <laughs> but um i've got uh one of the things one of the first things i noticed was um i got a chance to to really study what all the characters look like um cloud they beef cloud up like he he's he's got a little more tone because that very first uh teaser trailer they dropped he um he he looked almost anorexic now he's supposed to have the um geo stigma or uh <clears throat> he's supposed to be sick from his exposure to the um, Mako and the Mako energy and the live stream energy um, but <clears throat> he, he looked a little too emaciated in that first trailer they dropped honestly so to see that they had um, uh, fixed that looked good um, obviously the big one for me was Aerith I mean she looks just amazing you know she looks great they did a great job with her and um she i mean i was afraid they were gonna make her look cutesy or go this cutesy route because she's older than cloud she's a couple of years older than cloud i think and she's like <clears throat> like if you spoilers if you haven't played the other final fantasy 7 video games namely crisis core you uh you understand that her and cloud were never like an item so to speak uh, as they further wrote the story, it was her and Zack, and she reminded, uh, Cloud reminded her so much of Zack, that's why there was feelings of affection or whatever there, but the, I, I look at, um, Cloud and Aerith more like a, almost like a brother-sister kind of thing, you know, um, but that aside, um, she's supposed to look older, and she did, they did a good job with that, she looks perfect, just like I said in the video, the reaction my initial reaction I still feel that way she looks perfect they nailed it and <clears throat> there were little shots of her running and like fighting and stuff in the background when they were fighting the uh, the sewer creature uh, just seeing her emotion and fighting and that real-time combat it was it was fantastic like I, I'm really excited to get in there and play it um, Barrett looks cool uh, his voice was a little I don't know in the first trailer they did he looked or he sounded more gruff more stoic you know which I really dug that you know he's like we're paying you a lot of money you know uh, in that first trailer and this one he's like you know uh, what was it he said some it was something almost flippant you know he um uh, oh, take the load off your shoulders or something like that you know it was something real uh I don't know. I, th I think I called it a cross between Terry Crews and Randy Savage, <laughs> but uh, that, that kind of took me off. But uh, took me off guard a little bit. But everybody else sounds fine. The voice acting sounds fine to me. Um, I, now I don't think Barrett's going to sound like that the whole game. I think there's some people online who are blowing like they're they're saying. Uh, it's racist like he's racist and all this other kind of stuff people need to chill on that stuff they're they're not gonna make Barrett an openly like racist character or anything like that Barrett is a good father he's a great father he's um, leader of Avalanche you know he's a good man and uh, those are the things that I would <clears throat> if you've played the game you know those things and I'm sure those things will still be there in the story so I'm not worried about Barrett uh, Barrett's gonna be just fine I'm looking forward to playing as Barrett, like when they did the the character swaps, the trigger buttons, you know, you, you can actually play as Barrett as your main guy. You can play as, um, uh, look like you switch between all the characters actually, so I'm excited to do that. The battle system looks pretty cool, like uh, all the little functions, the Punisher, I don't know what that is, the little Punisher 
uh, thing on, on one of the screens they had on there. It was, uh, maybe that's like a retaliation attack, or maybe it's like, you know, your your health gets low or something like that. Uh, there wasn't there wasn't materia slots or magic spell slots, but I'm assuming because those aren't done yet. And <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, early in the game, you can't even use materia, like on that first mission, can you? I think, or he teaches Barrett how to use it. Yeah, you can use lightning. That's right. Yeah, you can use lightning. Um, bolt and ice I think when you're fighting the guard scorpion I, I'm gonna replay it I think so I bought it on my switch so I'm gonna play through it again I think um, <clears throat> just to get ready get ready I'm a <clears throat> old-school turn-based guy I love turn-based combat and like uh, video games Chrono Trigger probably my favorite game ever made Chrono Trigger is my game um, <clears throat> and I'm a real f a big fan of that like early to late 90s era of like jrpgs that that's what soul turn based for me i love it but i'm excited about this too um well one thing that i've seen people talking about is like it looks like everybody's thinking everything shown was bombing mission no no there was a lot more than bombing mission in there there was like uh they didn't show him but that that sewer monster that Aerith and cloud are fighting together that's when you get dumped out of Don Corneo's pimp palace or whatever it is he lives in in Wall Market. You get dumped and it's Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa. It's after the uh, it's after the famous Cloud cross-dressing scene. Um, so they actually showed stuff later up into the game in there. There's uh, quite a bit. You can see Tifa's name in a lot of the uh, the, the, the contextual menus. I have to swap back and forth. You, you see Tifa's name in there a lot, so um, I think there's going to be. The, yeah, the trailer showed a lot. The trailer, the trailer did show a lot. Um, so I think it's already shown us quite a bit of Midgar. Ideally, <clears throat> what I think this game is going to be. Um, everybody's talking about episodic, and it's oh, it's going to be like a Telltale game or, or something like that. It's not gonna be like a Telltale game. Uh, it's not gonna be like that. I think we're gonna get Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I think we're gonna get it in, I think, three huge, massive chunks. This could wind up being a 60 to 80 hour playthrough, you know, which, bring it on. I mean, once it's all said and done, because I think, if I had to guess, they're gonna put side, I, I hope they put side quests and stuff in there. I hope you get to explore more of Midgar. Uh, do some side streets, go to the uh, go to all the sectors of Midgar, take the train, go to all the sectors of Midgar. Uh, side quests, meeting other characters, you know, maybe do some side quests for the other avalanche members, do some side quests for like, you know, getting to know things about Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, and you know, do, go crazy with it. This is your chance to go crazy with Final Fantasy VII. You know, this is this is our big chance to. To, to get this definitive version of the game that was never possible to do before, you know? So go nuts with it. And, you know, there's going to be expansions. I mean, they'll, once the original, the, the, the core three games are done, I think this game, if I had to guess, I'm going to say that this game ends right as you leave Midgar. You know, I, I think that's going to be... Like if you look at Final Fantasy VII, the remake, as like a trilogy, like a movie trilogy, you know what I mean? Um, I think the first movie is going to be that first game, you know? So I'm excited to pack everything you can into it. And I'm excited for like, you know, once the, the three core games are done and your main storyline is over. Um, you know all the extra missions they're gonna do I mean they'll be make they'll be putting stuff out for this game for four or five years you know because here's the thing they know that this is gonna sell this is gonna make money it's gonna be a cash cow and that's fine if it's good that's fine this means they're gonna keep making more for it and I'm excited to, to revisit the characters to revisit the world to revisit the the, the epic story that was Final Fantasy 7. You know, if it wasn't for Final Fantasy 7, I probably wouldn't be writing or an artist or, or anything like that. You know, so I, it had a profound effect on me. Um, <clears throat> first time I'd ever played a video game that 
you know, really hit me like that, that I cared about all the characters and what was going on in the story, this complex, kind of multi-tiered storyline. Make it as long as you want, Square, but make it good. Just make it good, you know. We, we've had enough false starts with this, and you know, four years ago you announced it, and all this other kind of, all this other kind of stuff, you know, make it good, don't rush it. I'm fine with not rushing it, just don't rush it. Because once stuff starts to come out, it's going to keep coming out. It's going to be an avalanche, pun totally intended. It's going to be an avalanche of content coming out. And I, I say they're going to be, there's probably going to be a release every six months, would be my guess. I bet that's probably their goal. You know, they've had marketing meetings on this. They've had like release marketing meetings and merchandising and all this kind of stuff and how to go about it. And, you know, they brought people in to rework the game. Rumor is that it got reworked from the ground up from scratch. So, you know, there's a plan in place. And I bet that plan has to do with releases every six months. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Bring it on. Let's do it. You know? Um, the hype is through the roof of this game. Everybody's so hyped for this game. Square Enix knows they can't mess this up. They know that this is one that they have to get right. And it seems like they are. It seems like they're taking their time. And... I'm excited for it. Uh, I know a lot of you all are excited for it, so uh, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna wrap this up with that because I don't want I don't want this to run too long. It's just my thoughts on kind of what we've seen so far and where it's going and what might be what might be in the future. You know, E3 is coming up. E3 is like a month away, and we've got um, kind of almost like a assurance from Square that there is going to be a heavy presence for Final Fantasy 7 there because if you think about it you know they're, they're done with Kingdom Hearts 3 that's out that's that did well all their other big projects they're out you know Final Fantasy 15 was before that then Kingdom Hearts 3 now Final Fantasy 7 is their blockbuster right now so they're going they're going to go all in chips on the table all the chips in the center of the table for Final Fantasy 7 E3 I guarantee it I guarantee it. We're going to get a big announcement. I bet we get a release announcement. I get, but if it's not a release date, but it's going to be a release window, like quarter one, 2020. I don't think it's going to be this year just because I want, I want to be kind of skeptical. You know, I don't want, I want to temper my expectations. So I don't think we're getting it this year, but I do think we're going to get it next year and I'll go one better. I think we're getting it for the switch. I think it's going to come out on the switch. I do because um, I feel like Switch kind of needs that big AAA third party title. You know, Nintendo's got a lot of great AAA Nintendo titles, but to get Final Fantasy VII Remake on the Switch to run on the Switch, I mean, that'd be my go to. I spend a lot of time, I hit the road for shows and stuff like that, for art shows and conventions and things. I take that Switch with me. Final Fantasy VII Remake on the Switch. Day one, I'm there. I'm, I'm all in on day one on that. So, anyway, a lot of uh, a lot of theories floating around, a lot of rumors. So, uh, if if you dug this, let me know, man. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you agree with, you know, some of my theories where I think this is going, or you know, actually, you know what? Better yet. I want to know what part you're looking forward to. Tell me what part, what Midgar section in the remake you want to see or that you didn't see in the original game. You know, we had, what was it, one of the animated um, shorts they did when Crisis Core came out, <clears throat> or when Advent Children came out, of the little boy, or the kid, this little boy or little girl, I can't remember, whose parents worked at the section of section, uh, at the, the section of the plate that fell, Sector 7. His parents worked there, and that was like that was a gut wrenching story. And that was just a little side story they put in there, you know. So many stories they could tell, so many stories. I mean, so let me know what story you want to see told in this first game. You know, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. The lead up is going to be fun. This is going to be an event. I said it in the reaction video. This is an event. This will be an event, and you know we don't get a lot of events anymore. You know, as far as this kind of stuff goes. But, the people across multiple generations of the, what we love gaming and entertainment and just nerding out about stuff you know there's not often when multiple generations get to 
take part in a big event like this so this is this is a really cool time that we're in so let me know what you all think uh if you haven't subscribed subscribe we got a lot more content like this coming i've got a weekly show i'm get i've been shooting i've got two in the can right now i'm working on two more plus i do my art uh videos and time lapse stuff and random other things that kind of pop up from time to time so give me a subscription check me out look at my other videos and things like that and i will catch you all in the next one thanks a lot